will never approve such a marriage. It would be a travesty. A travesty of what? Responsible commitment. Translated, the trained animals are trying to get away from their keepers. Gee, Mr. Davis, ain't it a shame that Roger and Virginia have decided to act like the adults they are? In spite of all your efforts, in spite of that insidious article of letter you wrote, in spite of the whole damn insensitive world around them, those two are going to be married next month. They are sure going to miss you at their wedding. I'm sure they will. Oh, by the way, where did you say they'd be living after they get married? You know where they're going to be living. Virginia's going to move into Roger's apartment. Oh, I'm afraid not, Mr. As of this morning, all the transitional living apartments are for single, retarded adults. If Roger Myers and Virginia Hensler want to get married, they can find someplace else to live, anxious to rent to retards. Why, Mr. Davis? This place wasn't my idea. It was yours and other businessmen who believed in the principle of normalization. We've all worked so hard and come so far. Before I hand in my resignation, and please be notified that I am not coming back when my contract is up. Please tell me why. Why is it all right to encourage people like Roger and Virginia to go out into the world and support themselves and not all right to grant them the subsidiary privileges of adults? Why must slow-minded people continually be regarded as children when they are not? Because they must not reproduce. Now that's it. That's where all this garbage is coming from. Neither Virginia nor Roger is congenitally retarded. You know that. The chances of having a retarded child are no greater than yours or mine. You know that, too. And I'm sure you have heard of environmentally induced retardation. Trying to raise a child in an atmosphere so sterile of mental stimulation that the child's mind just doesn't grow. Well, I won't have that. We're trying to help people here, not make more basket cases. Mr. Davis, do you have a retarded child? Yes, I do. Severely retarded. Yes. Institutionalized. Permanently. Yes. I didn't know. But I should have. I'll meet you halfway, Mr. Stein. I'll withdraw my objections to the marriage. If you'll see to it and give me proof that there will be no children. You want me to take him downtown and have him sterilized? Would that make you feel less personally threatened? Go take a flying leap, Davis. Virginia and Roger are going to be thoroughly counseled and then they are going to make their own decision. And if you try to kick them out of here, I will consider it a violation of their civil rights, and I will haul your rear end into court. So, as the water sack breaks, the cervix dilates, and strong contractions push the baby down into the birth canal. And out she comes. Uh, here comes. Yeah. All right. So much for the basics. Did you read all the birth control literature I gave you? I did. He didn't. Why not, Roger? Because we want kids. We're, we're going to have a bunch like that show on TV. TV is one thing, Rog, but in real life, to support a bunch of kids, you need to earn four times as much as you do now. Then I will. How? I'll be a teacher. Roger, you have a high school equivalency certificate, and that's terrific. But to be a teacher, you would need a college diploma. That means English literature, languages, science, geometry. I taught myself long division, didn't I? You sure did, and that's a heck of an achievement. Yeah. But it took you 20 years. Kid comes home from school and asks us something, but we don't know the answer. Well, ask Bill Stein. He can tell the kid. But how do we feel? And what would our kid think of us? Virginia, why are you
you talking this way? I was just thinking. It'd be bad to have your own child be ashamed of you. Well, you said you wanted kids, and now you're talking like you don't. I don't know anymore. Well, I do. I said we're having kids, and I'm not changing my mind. Well, you can't have them alone. Roger, wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Roger. Look at it this way. What would you do if you were dead tired and you had to get up early to go to work and the baby suddenly wakes up screaming for a bottle at 3 o'clock in the morning? I'd wake up Virginia. Nope. Virginia got up last night and she's too tired to wake up. And it's your turn. The baby is howling, Roger, and it's all up to you. What do you do? Call the babysitter. Wrong again, Roger. Babysitters don't come out at 3 in the morning. To give bottles or change dirty diapers or know what to do if a baby should suddenly get sick. Only parents do that. <laughs> Babies get sick. And they take up all your time when they're little. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not that way on TV. That's the way it is, though. Honey. The way we are, we're slow. And we forget things sometimes. We're lucky just to have each other. Maybe that's not. You see the doctor? No babies, Roger. It's better for us. I got you a present. <laughs> oh, Virginia. Now I have two bunnies. <laughs> We did the right thing, Roger. I know we did. And we're gonna be happy.